Hey, <laughs> Coco. <laughs> hey, Coco. Hey, guys. How's it going? Um, I wanted to smash off a video. Better late than never tonight. And uh, this is Coco. He's our rescue dog here. Um, we came here with our Frenchie burrito, and our, uh, somebody, somebody, we went to go get burrito some help because he went into like a toxic shock one night when I don't know. I think he got stung by a scorpion or something like that. And then Senya walked in before me and. Uh, and then said, there's a dog here. And I was like, ah, no. And uh, somebody had thrown a, a little puppy over a fence to, to get killed by an aggressive dog. And he was all cut up and scarred up. And uh, the dog didn't kill him, which is a good thing. They found him, which is really weird because the dog was known in the neighborhood for, um, for being aggressive and attacking other dogs. And so Coco became part of the family. And uh, I, I don't know, this is Coco. I call him horse dog. Hey buddy, a little troublemaker. Um, anyway guys, I wanted to do a video tonight on a few different things. Uh, my workout today was amazing by the way. Uh, it's been really, it's been good going a little bit heavier uh, than I normally go because I normally do a lot of high volume and I'm doing the gains program this time. Um, so I'm trying to pack some, pack some weight on. So I'm really like, I'm watching the diet. I'm eating lots of healthy carbohydrates. I'm weighing everything and uh, I'm trying to get back into shape for, um, What's your guys' summer, but ultimately our winter. And uh, man, I'm sore. <laughs> I'm really sore. Um, I think the one thing that I just want to remind you guys is that it's really important to leave the ego at the door. That's the number one thing here. Leave your ego at the door. Uh, for a long time, when I was younger, I lifted really, really heavy. Um, but I also went through a lot of periods where I was injured and where I can recall three three periods of almost a year, uh, one of which I couldn't use my shoulder because I tore my shoulder out of the socket. Um, and then another one, another two periods actually of roughly eight months because I tore my quad from doing ridiculously heavy squats. And while my muscles could support it, my connective tissue couldn't. And I wish I knew back then what I knew now. You can still, <laughs> you can stay in shape. Um, you don't have to lift heavy weight uh, to get good muscle tone and big muscles and look good and be strong. You just have to be really controlled with, with weight um, that's within your range. And that's really what it boils down to. Uh, lifting heavy m might get you strong, but it'll also get you injured. And um, lifting medium weight slowly will also get you really strong, and it won't get you injured. So consequently, as a result, um, and I'm knocking on wood here, um, I haven't had any gym injuries in probably like the last three, four years um, since I've smartened up and really changed the way that I train and realized that I'm not 21 anymore. So... Uh, just keep those things in mind, guys. Um, always, you know, check yourself. And it's, you know, the guy beside you might be lifting more, but it's not about him. It's about you. And it's about your journey. And that guy beside you doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, man. Um, and don't pay attention to anybody else. Everybody's journey is unique and you need to do your own thing and you need to keep yourself in check with the weights, right? You're getting way more work done lifting um, weights that are controlled. Even if you're doing the gains program, even if you're lifting a little bit heavier, you're going to get way more work done if you're, if you're lifting weight that's within your control and you're doing nice, slow, calculated reps. So just remember that. Leave the ego at the door. Uh, today I want to talk to you guys about a couple – well, mostly I want to talk to you guys about mentality and how the mind enters into the equation when it comes to lifting because um, fitness, uh, particularly you know, like bodybuilding or body sculpting or whatever you're trying to do is a very mental game. It really is. Um, they did like a neural scan of, um, of athletes um, who would, I believe it was done on sprinters, who would picture the event in their head before they actually did it. And what they found is that the exact same neurons fired in the brain um, when they were putting themselves through this uh, moment of kind of practicing and this moment of concentration and this moment of focus is when they were actually doing the event itself. So what that's kind of indicative, indicative of, indicative, is that um, if you go there in the in the mind, um, you can go there in the in the in the body. And um, there's also another uh, science or another um, study done where where people went to go do lifts <clears throat> that were in their higher range, um, and the people who took the time to just uh, picture the lift before they took it and I know it'll look silly. I close my eyes at the gym all the time and when people give me weird looks I just smile because I know that the brain and the body are very 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 connected which is why I'm a huge proponent 
of spending time in the gym, but also spending time um, evolving your skills, reading, um, and and seeking knowledge and just self improvement in all areas of your life, whatever those might be. So um, for me, there's a certain kind of mentality that I, that I always have, and that I think a lot of um, a lot of people have when it comes to fitness before they go into the gym. And I kind of have a routine where uh, before I touch any weights, I take a few minutes to just stop and visualize. It's one thing to go to the gym and go through the motions. But what you want to do is you want to create the intention. If you do the same thing you've always done, you're going to get the results that you've always gotten. So you've really got to create the intention. And it's a weird exercise to do, but man, I'm telling you, if you guys believe me on this and you guys take the time to do this, um, you're going to see really, really good results. Take the time to set the intention of what you're going there to do. Are you going there to just drift through your workout and get it done so you can get home? Or are you going there to break some plateaus and to push your body? And once again, I'm not saying lift insane weight and hurt yourself. I'm just saying um, go in there like you're going to work. It, I'm going to cite um, – <laughs> And he's, he's an interesting guy, actually. He just I think he just had a heart replacement. Um, but a, a guy who um, I really like, he's got a lot of gusto, and a lot of you guys have probably heard of, and some of you might not have heard of. Um, but he's, um, he's a really famous fitness motivator who um, got into a car accident, and they told him he would never, never, uh, he would never lift again. And what he ended up doing was coming out of that and... Um, and lifting and, uh, and getting in really good shape. Um, and his, uh, his whole mantra is grow. Um, I'm going to excuse my language. guys. sorry. I know it's a PG show, but grow motherfucker grow. And, uh, and I could, you know, I command you to grow. And I think some of you guys might be familiar with that, um, with that saying, but, um, I think that, it's very important that you go there and you set the intention that you are going there to build your body and to build your strength and to really take the time to focus on that and to set the intention, not just to get through your workout, but to kill your workout. You know what I mean? To walk out of there like you accomplished something. To walk out of there and put in the type of work that's going to create hypertrophy, which is when your muscles are going to grow. It's it's a very mental sport. It's a, Fitness is a very mental thing, you know? Um, I think that a lot of people look at these big bodybuilders and they, they assume that they're stupid. Um, and some of them probably are, some of them are, um, and just have really good teams behind them. But a lot of these guys, um, a lot of these guys are highly, highly intelligent. Um, they're, you know, they're pretty much practicing medicine on their own body. And, and not only that, um, not only that, they've got to be very well informed about a huge plethora of things, everything from nutrition to hormones to whatever it might be. But they also, one thing that a lot of these guys have in common is just this intense desire and mental strength to be able to push through the workouts and, um, <laughs> burrito, to be able to push through the workouts and to be able to push their body to a new level. If you're going to just do your workout, you're going to just do your workout. Um, if you go there and you set the intention, that you're going there to improve yourself and you're going there to break those muscle fibers down and you're going in there to do some work and you're not leaving there until you're tired. Um, you're going to have that much more success. Another technique that I use a lot of that I talk a lot about in these challenges is I will literally sit there and I'll take um, three or four deep breaths. I'll close my eyes and I will picture myself successfully completing the set with the weight that I've allocated. It's um, a little bit of visualization goes a long way, um, and as that you know, as some of the studies have proven, when you take the time to visualize it, when you take the time to see it, and when you take the time to set the intention of what you're going there to do, um, you tend to do more and you tend to get further. Right? It's kind of all about visualizing your goals. If you never set goals, you never attain them, and um, that's kind of why I ask what people's goals are in the intake form. Right? We want to know what you're thinking. We want to make sure that you set defined goals before you go in there. And one of the goals that you should set every single day when you go to that gym is to go in there and to make sure that you do the work, not just to get through your workout, but to push yourself into a new zone that you haven't been before. So your body can get to a new zone that it hasn't been before. I think that that's really, really important. And I think it's really important that you realize how closely the brain and the body are connected and um, and really start to explore that for yourself because it makes a it makes a world of difference, right? As I said, you know, to if you're doing the same thing, you're gonna get the same results. Um, 
And that's just kind of how it is. And that's kind of why we created the Savage and Six program. It's a six week program designed to push you, designed to push you to the next level. And I'm not there to push you. I'm here and I'm going to be giving you guys check ins. We're going to talk more about check ins soon. But it's designed to get you to, to push yourself to another level um, through six weeks of intense workouts and six weeks of proper eating. So um, make sure that you set that intention. If you set that attention, you're going to get good results. You really will. I promise you that. And if you set the intention to go in there and do well, you're going to walk out doing well. And you're going to do well in the whole process. So um, remember that and, and keep that close to your heart. You want to go to places you've never been. You've got to do things you've never done. And um, I'm right here doing it along with you guys. And I'm sore. So <laughs> I'm still trying to shake my oh, shake my back work out um, from a couple of days ago. So uh, just remember that, right? Set the intention. Don't go there to get through your reps. Go there to um, break down the muscle fibers and, and push yourself to a to a new level. Build that muscle, build that, you know, build that tenacity and build that mental focus and build that mental toughness. You know what I mean? And um, expect to fail and and be okay with failure because if you, if you, you know, you don't want to fail too often, but you do want to hit failure on some sets. I recommend that you hit failure maybe once out of every exercise that you do, right? You shouldn't be able to complete another rep. I think any more of that is counterproductive. Um, but I think that um, failure on, on certain sets is okay as long as it's a safe set. You're not going to go and not get a spot and fail on bench press and think that that's going to be okay because it's not. But in those circumstances and in those sets where you can safely put weight down, um, you know, push yourself a little bit. And the more you push yourself, the more the results are going to show. You know what I mean? The, as I kind of said before, the summation of how you were going to do in this challenge is how much time you have spent outside of your comfort zone. Um, and the acclimation to that comfort zone, because every time you get acclimated with a new comfort zone, whether it's a new level of, um, you know, whether it's a, a new level of failure or every time you make your, yourself uncomfortable and you make your body uncomfortable and your mind says, no, you can hang in that zone for longer and you're going to push those limits further. So get comfortable with being uncomfortable, set the intention before you go to the gym. You're not going there to play around. It's not playtime. You're going in there to become the best version of you that you can possibly be. And you're going to combine that with other things. You know what I mean? I recommend that um, during the six week challenge that uh, we pick different topics and we, you know, we study things and maybe we set the goal to meditate for 20, 20 minutes a day, or maybe we set the goal to read 30 pages out of our favorite book because big biceps don't mean a damn thing. If this is locked out, it's all interconnected and it's important. So go hard guys. And, um, I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a good night. Ciao.